following up on the previous part, let's talk about how to improve the epsilon video rhythm by comparing different arms during the exploration. Suppose we have done the following experiments. Let's say that um, we have pulled arm one for 10 times, and these are the rewards that we got. And we have pulled arm two only once, and the, the reward is one, and we have pulled arm three for 10 times, and these are the rewards. Then if we calculate the average arm rewards, we're gonna get uh, that uh, the average reward for M1 will be 0 0.5, and the average arm, arm reward for M2 will be exactly one. And for three, the average reward would be 0 0.8. Now, the question is which arm would you pick next? If we use our previous Rudy algorithm, then we'll probably pick the second arm, right? Because it currently has the largest arm, average arm reward. But if you look at it carefully, you can see that we, we actually have only pull arm two for only once. Therefore, this estimate of arm reward is actually not very confident. And on the other hand, this third arm, although its uh, average arm reward is slightly less than one, but we already pull, pull this arm for 10 times. Therefore, we, this point eight is actually uh, much more uh, accurate and we are much more confident about our estimate. So maybe the third arm is also a good, a good choice. And this is actually the intuition behind our new algorithm. So the idea is don't just look at the mean, that is the expected reward or expected payoff, but also we're, we're gonna look at the confidence of our estimated reward. And an important concept related to the new algorithm is the confidence interval. So basically it will uh, quantify how confident we are about our estimated reward. And the confidence interval is just a range of values within which we are sure that the mean will lies with a certain probability. So for example, let's say that um, uh, 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 is actually a 95% uh, confidence interval. If, if we could believe that this ground truth mu a is within this range with probability uh, 95%. Know that this, this mu a is the ground truth uh, expected reward. It's not the estimated reward that we calculate from the average, it's the actual one. And if we could, basically if we would have tried that action less often, our estimated reward would be uh, less accurate. So the confidence interval would be larger, right? This is the intuition of this confidence interval. And the confidence interval will shrink as we get more information. So basically if we try the action more often, we're gonna get more information and the confidence interval will shrink. Now, assuming we already know the confidence intervals, then instead of trying the action with the highest mean, like what we do in the greedy algorithm, we can instead try the action with the highest upper bound on this confidence interval, right? And by doing this, we have actually considered both the exploitation and exploration with within this one single policy, right? And, and this algorithm is called a uh, optimistic policy because we believe that an action is as good as possible given the available evidence. And sometimes it's also called optimism in face of uncertainty. Now, for example, let's say that we have a total number of three arms and after a few trials, after a few experiments, we calculate their expected uh, estimated expected reward, and this is what we get. Um, for example, this uh, this blue small box here is the uh, average reward for the second arm, and this arrow bar here is the is the confidence interval. In, in particular, this is the ninety nine point ninety ninety nine percent. 
confidence interval. And after we do more exploration, basically we try this three ounce for several more times. And then we can see that um, there will be some slight change uh, uh, in the estimated expected reward for each arm. And we also have some, some changes in terms of the confidence interval. Basically, if we, after we explore this, uh, this second arm for, for more times, then the confidence interval will shrink. So this is actually consistent with our intuition. Now suppose, uh, suppose we, we know that we can uh, use this confidence interval and confidence mount as a algorithm to determine the best sample pool in the next round. But one question is how do we calculate this confidence bound or confidence interval, right? And suppose we, uh, we fix arm A and let's say that YA1, YA2 all the way to YAM uh, is the payoff of arm A in the first M experiments. So we pull this arm A for M times and this is the reward that we get. And so uh, basically these N values are just uh, IID draws taking the value of uh, zero and one. Then the mean payoff of arm A, uh, this, this is actually uh, the ground truth expected reward. And we say that this, this mean payoff of arm A is actually the expectation of YAL, where L is actually index of, uh, of the trial. So basically uh, we, we are saying that this is expected uh, reward for arm A. And our estimate according to the data, uh, which we didn't know as uh, mu AM hat, is just the average over all the values that we get from this n numbers. Then basically what we want to do is that we want to find a number b such that with high probability, the, the distance between mu a, which is the uh, ground truth, the expected reward of m a, and the distance between this mu a and uh, the mu a m hat will be uh, smaller than or equal to b. So, and, and we also want this b to be as small as possible so that our estimate is, is close enough to the ground truth. So basically the goal is to bound uh, this probability. So we want to bound this probability that the distance between mu a, which is the ground truth, and the mu a m hat, which is the estimated uh, reward for m a, is smaller than or equal to b. And we can do this using the Hopkins inequality. Specifically, let's say uh, that x1, x2, all the way to xm are in the uh, id draws taking the values between zero and one. And let's say that the, uh, the ground truth expected reward uh, is, is mu for some arm. So this is the expectation of x then uh, the, the estimated reward that we calculated as the average of all these values is denoted as a uh, mu m hat. Then what, hope, what the Hopkins inequality tells us is that the probability that uh, the distance between mu and mu m hat uh, is larger than or equal to b this probability is actually smaller than or equal to two times the exponential of uh, my, minus two b squared. So basically uh, to find out the confidence interval b for a given confidence level delta here, we just need to solve this following inequality. So basically we will solve, uh, solve for b in this inequality and then we'll get uh, that b needs to be uh, larger than or equal to the square root of log two over delta uh, over two n. So basically, what this what this slide says is that if we want a 
confidence interval such that uh, some reward will be uh, in this confidence interval for a uh, with a high probability delta. For example, this probability can be uh, ninety five percent. Then this b needs to be at least as large as this number, right? And intuitively, uh, we can see that as m gets larger, so basically as we uh, as we uh, pull a specific um, more times, this m will get larger, then this b will actually get smaller, right? And this confidence interval uh, will be strings. Basically, that says that says that our, our, we are more confident about our uh, estimation of the reward of of the reward for the for a specific term, right? And another way of looking at this uh, Hopkins inequality is that we have this inequality where uh, the number b is our upper upper bound. And the M is the number of times we play this specific action. So we, this is the number of times we pull this specific arm. And the delta here is the, is the probability that our upper bound B is wrong. Now let's suppose that we want this uh, probability to be really small. Let's say that we want this probability delta to be equal to uh, four, uh, two times T to the power of minus four. So T is the number, uh, the total number of rounds we play, uh, we play these, these actions. Then we can see that this is actually a very, very small number. And suppose we want this, we want it to be this small, then we only need to set B to be uh, the square root of two times log T over MA, where MA is the number of times we play action, play this action A. Then if we do this, then we then Hopkins inequality tells us that the probability uh, that the difference between mu and mu and pi uh, is larger than or equal to b is uh, at most two times t to the power of minus four, and we can see that this probability it actually convert converges to zero very quickly, right? Because it's like with a power of four. So as you as we have more rounds, this number converge very quickly to zero. And note that we if we do not play action A, this this confidence, uh, this upper confidence, this upper confidence now B is actually going to increase a lot. Right? This means that we never permanently rule out an, an action no matter how poorly it performs. And the second thing we need to know is that the probability our upper bound is wrong. It actually decreases with time t. Right? Because uh, again, this is two times t to the number of minus four. So as, as t gets larger, the probability will decrease dramatically. Now, with this in mind, we already know how to calculate the, the confidence bound, right? Then next we can use this confidence bound we calculated to develop our final algorithm. And we call this algorithm the UCB algorithm or the upper confidence bound algorithm. So as an initialization, we're gonna set the, the a mu one hat, mu two hat, all the way to mu k hat to zero. So this mu a hat is actually the our estimate of the payoff of m i, and we're also going to set m i, m uh, m one, m two, all the way to m k to zero. And this m a is just the number of pools of m a so far. So how many times have we pulled this specific m a so far? This is a counter, and then this algorithm goes as follows: for each round t, we're gonna perform the following steps. So for the first step will be that for each arm A, we're gonna compute the up, upper confidence now. Uh, and this upper com confidence now will be uh, uh, the summation of two terms. And the first term will be the average 
average reward that we computed for a specific R. And the second term actually comes from uh, the confidence interval that we computed in the previous slides, right? You can see that it's uh, two times log T over MI, right? And this alpha here is actually a free parameter or hyperparameter that we use to trade off between exploration and exploitation. Then in the second step, we're gonna pick the armj that has the largest upper confidence now. So basically, uh, whichever arm has the largest value of this, we're gonna pick this arm and we're gonna pull this arm. And after we pull this arm, we're gonna observe some actual, actual reward from this arm. Right? And then the, in the last step of each iteration, we're gonna update the counter. So basically we have pulled this arm j for one more time, therefore we're gonna increase it by one. And since we have a new, have new reward, from this arm, we're gonna update the average reward for this specific arm. So this is the uh, upper confidence bound algorithm to trade off between uh, exploration and exploitation. We can see that this actually very naturally incorporate exploitation and exploration, right? This first term is actually the explo uh, exploitation part and the second term is the expo exploration part. Now let's, take a careful look at this key equation here. We can see that this confidence interval here, it actually grows with the total number of action T we have taken. So basically as, uh, as the total number of actions T gets larger, this, this uh, confidence interval will, will grow too. But this interval actually shrinks with the number of times MA that we have tried arm A. So basically the more times we have tried this arm, then uh, we are more certain about our calculated estimated reward for this arm, right? Therefore this, uh, this interval will shrink. And this actually ensures that each arm is tried uh, infinitely often, but still balances exploration and exploitation. And this is, as we mentioned before, this algorithm is also called optimism in face of uncertainty, because this algorithm believes that it can obtain actual rewards by reaching the under, unexplored parts of the state space. The next question about this UCB algorithm is that, is there any theoretical guarantee uh, for this algorithm? Suppose that the optimal mean payoff is, uh, is mu star. So this is the, this is basically the maximization of all the ground truth reward among all the arms. And we did note it as mu star. And we also say that for each arm, we calculate uh, a delta A, uh, which is equal to mu star minus uh, mu A. So this is the difference between the optimal mean payoff and the ground truth uh, mean payoff for a specific arm. So for, for, for a different arm, we have a different delta A. Then we, we can actually prove that the expectation of the regret is actually bounded by, by the sum of two terms. And the first term we can see that it's actually in the order of big O k times log t. And the second term is, uh, is smaller, it's in the, in the order of big OK. So overall, this, uh, this whole thing is in the order of big, big OK log T. So basically, if we are interested in the average regret or amortized regret, then this uh, RT over T would be in the order of big OK times uh, log T over T. We can see that as the T, goes to infinity, uh, this average regret actually goes to zero. Note that this bound here is actually the worst case regret. And in reality, things are actually usually much better. So the regret in, in some real world experiment is usually much, um, much, much lower uh, than this. And to briefly summarize, 
so far we have talked about k unstanded problem as a formalization of the exploration exploitation trade-off and we are we have discussed some simple algorithms that are able to achieve no regret in the limit so these are the uh, rt over t that we talked about for example we we have uh, recently focused on the ucb algorithm upper confidence smell where it simply in each round will pick an mk with the largest upper confidence smell and the upper confidence smell versus for a specific arm is calculated as the sum of two terms. So the first term would be the average reward we, we calculated for this arm. And the second term would be the confidence interval times some hyperparameters. 